Hello, Divination, and welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a column swipe hero section design for Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So let's call this page swipe. And then I'm going to click on use Divi Builder, build from scratch. So the first thing we need to do is to add our background gradient on our section. So I'm going to come over here to the top left and click on this gear icon, click on background. And then I'm going to click the second tab to add our gradient. Next, click on this plus button. And for our first color, we're going to set this to white. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So now I'm going to add my second color. And then over here, make sure your gradient is set to linear and the gradient direction to 90 degrees. And then the start and end position, we're going to set this to 17%. Next, we're going to add our top and bottom padding by coming over here to design, spacing and going to set this to 5VW and then save. Now let's add our rows. So I'm going to click on this plus button and the rows we're going to add is pretty much a single column. And then before we add any modules, we want to come over here to our row settings and let's head over here and add our background color and I'm going to paste it in here. So the next thing we need to do is to set our gutter width. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing and I'm going to activate use custom gutter width and we're going to set this to one. Now, the reason why we're setting this to one is because we want to make sure there's no spaces between our columns. Next, we need to set our width and currently it's at 80%. So we want this at 60 VW. And then for the maximum width, we're going to set this to 100%. Now over here, as you can see, we have our row alignment and we're going to set this to right. Now let's take a look at our spacing because we also need to add top and bottom padding. So I'm going to click here on spacing and for our top and bottom padding, we're going to set this to 6 VW. And I'm going to activate the change since I want the same size for the bottom as well. Next, we need to add a left padding of 5.5. So I'm going to add it over here. And then the right padding is going to be 24 VW. Now let's add a border to this. So I'm going to come over here to border and the border we need to add is going to be on the left. So I'm going to choose this tab here and our width here is going to be six pixels and our color is going to be white. So I'm just going to come over here to my recent colors and select my white color. Now let's work on the box shadow. So the style we're going to go, in fact, before we talk about the style, uh, we need to select box shadow and we're going to go with this first one here. Next, we are going to set our blur strength and currently it's at 18 pixels, we want this at 100. And then on the color, I'm just going to click here and paste my color between the brackets. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So what we're going to do next is to add a bit of CSS. So we want to add a CSS class. So we're going to come over here to the advanced tab, CSS ID and classes. And for our CSS class, we're going to set this to uh, swipe scroll bar. Now to create a horizontal uh, swipe, we also need to add a bit of CSS code, but this time this is going to go to the main element. So I'm going to come over here to custom CSS and paste my code in here. Now, as I mentioned before, this code can also be found in the in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Right. So the next stage now is to set our overflows. So I'm going to come over here to visibility and for our horizontal overflow, I'm going to set this to scroll and for our vertical overflow, I'm going to set this to hidden. So pretty much this is all we need to do here for our row settings. Now let's head over back here to the content and let's go into the actual column settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon and we're going to start here with the background. So uh, as we did before, we're going to go with a gradient. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and add my first color. Now the colors I'm going to add here for my gradients are going to be, are going to have transparency. So I'm just going to drag this right slider down so that I get my transparency settings. And then I'm just going to click and paste my color between the brackets. So make sure you paste your values between the brackets. 
So the next color here as well is going to have a bit of transparency. So again, I'm going to paste between the brackets like that. And then I'm going to adjust my start and end position. So over here, our start position needs to be at 35%. And then the end position needs to be at 81%. Now for this gradient to show, it needs to be placed above the image. So I'm going to make sure I activate place gradient above image now we need to add an image to this background so i'm going to click here on the third tab click on this plus button and i'm going to go with this image here so if you want to use your own image the dimensions here are as follows it's 874 by 1000 pixels i'm going to click here on upload image so there's also a few things we need to make sure are set here so make sure it's set to cover center and no repeat. We don't want this image to repeat. Now it's time to go and set our padding. So let's head over here to our design tab, click on spacing. And for our padding, I'm gonna start here with my top and bottom, set this to 4VW. And then I'm gonna set my left and right padding. And this is going to be 2VW. So notice I've activated my chain because I want the value to be applied to both sides. Now let's add a border. So what we're gonna do now here on the border is to add some rounded corners and we're gonna set this to 20 pixels and make sure the chain is activated here because if it's not, it only applies the value to one of the sides. Now, another important thing to do here for this to work is to add a bit of CSS code to the main element of this column. So let's head over here to the advanced tab, click on custom CSS and on the main element here, we're just gonna add our CSS code. And also, by the way, it can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So now let's save, save one more time, and then we're gonna start adding all our modules. So I'm gonna start by clicking on this plus button and this is gonna be our text module. I'm gonna select that. And here I'm just gonna say first swipe item. But of course the text can be whatever you want and make sure also this is set to heading three. So I'm just gonna highlight this and set this to heading three. Now let's customize this text by coming over here to design, heading text, heading three. And we're gonna change our font here to Poppins. So I'm just gonna search for it. So for the weight here, we're gonna set this to light and we're also going to set the text color here by clicking on this eyedropper tool, paste my color in here. And we also need to set our size and for our heading, our size is going to be 1.5 VW and save. We also need another text module. So we're gonna click here on this plus button, search for my text module and select it. So I'm just gonna delete some of this text here. And now let's go to our text settings. And under text, I'm gonna set this to Poppins as we did with our header. And also here on the weight, we're gonna set this to light. And then we also need to set our text color by clicking on this eyedropper tool, pasting my color in here. And then we also need to set our size and our size here for our text is going to be 0.8 VW. Now for this one here, <coughs> we need to go to our spacing because here on the spacing, we need to add a bottom margin of 18 VW, save. Now we also need to add more modules here, but this time this is going to be a button module. So I'm just gonna search for it. So to make some changes to our button, in fact, before we make any changes to our button, make sure that you add your link over here. And then now let's customize this button by coming over here to button, use custom styles for button. And the very first thing we need to do is to set our text size. So I'm gonna make sure this is set to 18 VW. We're gonna add our button text color, paste it in here, and then for our button border width, we're gonna set this to one pixel. And let's also add our button border color. Again, I'm just gonna paste it in here. For our button border radius, this is gonna be five pixels. And then our font here, we're gonna change it from default to Poppins. Now notice I'm using Poppins throughout here because that's the font that we are using throughout this uh, tutorial. And this is also great for consistency. Now let's go to spacing because over here we need to set our padding. And for the top and bottom, we're gonna set this to one VW. Then for the left and right, we're gonna set this to three VW and then save. Now I've just noticed something here. The uh, module that I added earlier on, the size here is not right. So let's go back in and let's fix that. So I'm gonna come back over here to text. And as you can see here, it's set to 0 0.8 pixels instead of VW. Now that's much better. So I'm gonna save that. And then next we also need to add 
uh, a divider in this. So I'm going to search for my divider module and select it. So we're going to give this divider a line color by coming over here to design a line and then clicking on this eyedropper tool and pasting my color in here and then save. Now this divider needs to be below the button. So I'm just going to go ahead and just drag it below the button here. Right. So moving on, we also need another text module. So I'm going to click on this plus button and search for my text module and select it. So we're going to come over here and stylize this text by clicking here on design text. We're going to change our font to poppins. We're going to change our color and for our weight, we're going to change this from regular to light. And we also need to set our text size by coming over here and make sure it's 8VW. And for the line height, it's going to be 2.3. And then for the spacing, we're going to add a top margin of 2VW. So that's just so that we have a bit of breathing space between our button and our line. So I'm going to save this. And as you can see here, I've got my divider in the wrong place again. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to wireframe mode and then just look for my divider here and just drag it into position. Okay. And then let's switch back over here. So that's how it's supposed to look. So now that we have this design here, we need to clone, we need to clone this five times. So I'm going to come back over here to my column structure. Now this is the one that we've been working on. So we just need to clone this five times. And then we're going to save. Now it's time to add a second row. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to wireframe view and then add my row. And this time we're going to need two columns. So now let's go into our settings. In fact, you know what? Let me just close this because we're not adding any modules yet. So I'm going to come over here to my row settings, switch back over here to the front end editor, and we're going to start with our gutter width. So I'm going to go to spacing. In fact, I mean the wrong thing. I need to come over here to my design sizing and activate gutter width. And as we did before, we're going to set this to one and then we're going to set our width to a hundred percent and also our maximum width to a hundred percent. Next, we're going to scroll all the way down here to spacing. And what we're going to do here is to set our padding to zero pixels to the top and the bottom and then save. So now on column one, we're going to add some text and we're just going to call this swipe hero section. So first of all, I'm going to search for my texts and then I'm going to set this to swipe hero action, uh, swipe hero section. And we also need to set this to heading one by highlighting it and setting this to heading one. Now let's customize this heading. So since we've been using Poppins as our main font, let's be consistent and continue with that. So I'm going to come over here to heading text, change this from default to Poppins, and then I'm going to set my color here. I'm going to paste it in here. Now I know I keep saying this, but this is just a reminder that if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So now that we've added our color, let's add our heading size. I'm going to set this to three VW. Now we're going to come all the way down here to spacing because here we need to set our margins and we're going to set our margin to minus 35. Then we also need to set our left and right margin. So for our left, we're going to set this to five. And then for the right margin, we're going to set this to 12 VW. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. Let's save. Next, we're also going, uh, we're also going to add a text module to column one. So I'm going to add my text module. Now let's work on our styling. So here on text, we're going to set this to poppins and we're also going to set our color. I'm going to paste my color in here and here on the font weight, I'm going to set this to light. We're also going to uh, set our size to 0 0.8 VW and then Finally, for this text, we're going to add a line height of 2.8. Next, we're going to add our margins. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here to spacing. And for our top and bottom margin, we're going to set this to 2VW. Then for our left, be 5VW. And then for the right, we're going to set this to 13 VW. Now we are also going to add a button to column one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button and search for my button module, and select it. So here I'm just going to call this learn more, add my blank link. But in your case, this needs to be a link that works. Then I'm going to come over here to design and stylize our button. So I'm going to start here by clicking on button, use custom styles for button. And then I'm going to add my button text color, paste it in here. My size here is going to be 
0.9 VW. And then the next stage is to add our button background color. So I'm just gonna come over here. In fact, that's the wrong item. So for our button background color, I'm just gonna click on this plus button and add my color. So for my button border width, we're gonna set this to zero. And for the radius, we're gonna set this to five pixels. Now let's set our font. And here we're gonna continue with our consistency by using pop-ins. And now we're gonna add our margins. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to spacing. And for our top margin, we're gonna set this to 2VW. And then for our left margin, this is gonna be five. Now let's add our top and bottom padding. And this is going to be 1.5 VW. And for the left and right, we're gonna set this to 6 VW. Now let's add a box shadow. So we're gonna go with the first style here. So let's start here with the vertical position. So right now it's set to two. Let's set this to 20. So for our blur strength, we're gonna set this to 50. And the spread strength is going to be minus five. And while we're here, we might as well add our shadow color, then paste my values between the brackets and then save. Now I've just noticed here that my text here is not in the right position. So I'm just gonna adjust that. Okay, so that's looking much better. And then we just have to publish this, exit the visual builder and this is our final design. So you can see here, we have a beautiful section hero area and I can now scroll between my items here. But of course you wanna go in and change the titles of these and also the links to your buttons. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials and when we go live. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.